Um, so my name is Vicente Guayard. Uh, we are going to start the um, uh, the third uh, the, th the third uh, open event related with the um, with the design for living competition. Uh, we are having a problem because one of our guest members is not able to connect and we'll see if he will be able to connect. But I think that we have with us Daniel Ibáñez that is here. Yes, Daniel. Yeah, I see Daniel, so he's here. And then uh, we have also with us uh, uh, Jiwon Jun, uh, he's connected from Montreal. G, oh, G, how are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. And Daniel is also here. And I don't know if Javier is already here. He had some problems to connect. Ah, yeah, he's here or not? Javier, can you say hello? Javier, audio is connecting at the moment. Sorry? The audio of Javier is now still connecting. He will be able to answer in some seconds. Okay, so this is good. Um, so yeah, as you know, we uh, Iac has been organizing. Javier, how are you? No, sorry for the delay, some technical problems, but now it's fine. Thanks. Okay. Uh, this is perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, so, as we say, we have today our third event uh, related with the competition Design for Living. This is the eighth edition of the Advanced Architecture con uh, Contest. In the year 2005, uh, Jack, that in fact started his academical programs in the year 2001, decided to launch one of the first ever digital competitions through internet. So the idea was uh, that uh, maybe we could call for a global debate about some topics. And then the idea was uh, that uh, the winner will receive a full scholarship to come to study to Barcelona. And then this would be good for the, for the architect or the student. Uh, and then obviously it would be good for IAC because then attract talented people is always very good. So today we have been able to invite three of the uh, winners. Uh, we invite other people that they were not able to join us today because of some problems related with calendar. And then, uh, and what I did was to prepare some pictures of uh, themselves when they were students. We have uh, the first, in fact, the first year uh, the first, there were two groups of winners. Uh, one of the winners was Daniel Ibañez with Rodrigo Rubio. At that moment, they were students in, uh, in Madrid and they came here to study to IAC. And at the same time, they were still a student in, in Madrid. Uh, the competition was related with the self-sufficient building. And uh, Daniel is right now uh, in, uh, in Cambridge, uh, finishing the PhD in Harvard. And then he's also uh, teaching and he's the co-director of one of our masters, the masters in advanced ecological buildings at IAC. Uh, we have also with us uh, Ji Won Ju. Uh, he is, uh, he's an architect. He was born in Korea, but now he is working for a company in Cambridge, but he's living in Montreal. Yeah, All right? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Good. And then... I was uh, born in Japan, but it's okay. <laughs> good. And then we have Javier Fernandez. Javier was born in Nicaragua. He was studying in Mexico when he applied to the competition. And then he was awarded and then he came to Barcelona. Uh, and then he will explain us what, uh, what he was doing. I would like just to share some of the pictures of... Uh, of these people in uh, our guests uh, being Jack uh, students and researchers. So the first one you see here, we have uh, Daniel, the young Daniel Ibáñez with Rodrigo Rubio. 
I think that this was the first year when we moved to uh, Pujadas, that is the main building at IAC, that is in, in the Poble Nou. So you see, he was young and very rebel. And, uh, <laughs> and then we have also, sorry. Yeah, we, I think that the next year, I think is when we start the Fab Academy. And then Daniel was also graduated in the, the first generation of people in the Fab Academy. So this is the very initial Fab Academy and teleconference here, you see with the screen in the left, you know, that the Fab Academy is a program connected with MIT and that we develop uh, uh, in a distributed mode. But this one, uh, this year was really the first year when this program was happening. Uh, also, we were participating in the Venice Biennale and we did an incredible installation in the Arsenale with uh, all the big firms, architects around the world. And then we did an installation called Hyper Habitat. And then we brought a team of people to, uh, to, to build our installation there. And then the last night before the jury passed over the installation, uh, the, the, we were doing some pictures uh, with the students like uh, actors. And then here you see half naked Daniel Ibanez in the installation in the Venice Biennale. Yeah. And the last one is the picture of the Fab Lab house. Uh, this was our first big, big house that we built in the year 2010 in Madrid. Daniel was born in Madrid, so we were somehow coming back to your his city, and then we were able to build that uh, incredible prototype back in that year. Uh, we have G. G is here. He started to study at IAC when we had already by Daura. And then, uh, well, he was working as uh, collaborating with some activities that you will see now at IAC. And well, he was dressing very handsome. Uh, yeah, well, they were always partying and doing many other things. This is in the rooftop of IAC, where is this prototype done with the KUKA, with uh, Alex Dubor, that is the director of the Master of Robotics uh, today. And then we have a G here uh, in the rooftop of, uh, of the IAC building. And then here is a picture of the, one of the days of the graduation of the uh, year where G was a student. Let's see if we can see G here. No.
Sorry, Vicente is having some connection problems. And if Javier, um, would you mind to start with your presentation, please? Okay. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Uh, hello. So sorry because uh, this is <laughs> the live. Uh, yeah, there was collapse. There was a collapse in the Wi-Fi in my area. So I'm sorry. I don't know which point we we are. So Javier, maybe start with your presentation, and you can explain maybe what okay. I was trying to explain. So thank you, Javier. Okay, let me share my screen then. Can you see the screen? Not yet. Yeah, now yes. Yes. Okay, uh, so thank you all for the invitation. Um, uh, my name is Javier, um, uh, and I'm uh, working uh, with my studio J2J in Barcelona. And uh, it, uh, then uh, there was this opportunity to participate in the, in the, in the contest, and uh, I was uh, uh, intrigued by, by this sort of contest, which was more uh, exploration inspiration contest of ideas and so I did something related to the production of, of lo the local production of food in the cities and uh, uh, bringing hyd hydroponic aeroponics and, and other things uh, closer to cities in a in a certain uh, vertical way in that moment so this were the uh, after after being uh, one of the uh, lucky ones to to won the master program in at uh, uh, these sort of images were all the time around in the in the school very experimental things uh, you get to meet uh, people from from different uh, backgrounds and, and parts of the world which was a, a very interesting part of the experience I have to say um, I, I uh, I started uh, the master um, uh, some uh, 2014, I guess, and then uh, I was kind of working, and it was a bit. Uh, I have to combine different different things, but uh, I managed to to do it at the end. Uh, so uh, you get to to see all these sort of um, uh, great projects in a way that uh, starts exploring other other things of the city, for example. Uh, there was like the final project, but here at the uh, left uh, top corner, uh, I wrote the, the words explore, because for me, yak can be many things, but one was exploration or, or discovering of different different things. Uh, there were some projects uh, related to fabrication, to, to food, to water, to energy. And uh, so you were, uh, let's say, open to, to get dig deeper into different topics in, in a certain way. So uh, after uh, finishing this, this um, experience at the AC, I obviously, as, as many of us, I guess, uh, want to keep on exploring and discovering different aspects of, of the, the, the city and the, and the metabolism of, of things. And I wanted to test it in, a, in, the, in the city itself and the physical Obviously, you do, we, do, we did a lot of physical things at the AC as well, but I wanted to see how this works. So things like prefabrication, resources, uh, people, of course, which is always at the center of every project, uh, energy, uh, water, and data, for example, and technology were some, some things that intrigued me. So the first opportunity came actually when I was uh, studying at the, at the master kind of um, did a competition with another uh, architect, uh, Catalan architect, 
and uh, for the Ayuntamiento, which was a sports facility in uh, No Barris, and uh, get to won that competition, and had to start working at the same time in a way uh, with, in this project, which was uh, experimenting some of the things I, uh, I was curious personally and that I start discovering at the IAC as well. Already mentioned like the resources, um, water, energy, that, 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 et cetera. So this is um, the plot. Uh, I will try not to make the typical architecture explanation of, of everything, but uh, maybe I, I uh, can omit doing some of those things. But uh, yeah, so what I will try to show in this image is that there was a context, a complex context in No Barris, which is a low income neighborhood in the uh, northeast part of Barcelona. And uh, I don't know if you can see the pointer. Yeah, uh, there was all this empty space between uh, those uh, housing blocks and there was an existing pool from the 70s already obsolete by regulations. And here was the school. And there were a few low, uh, low height houses, let's say, uh, different density than from the rest of the locks, which were the kind of the original. Uh, but this was all uh, concrete. And so what the idea of this, this project uh, was, was to make a garden, let's say a park in the middle of those two, two blocks. And then uh, we were asked to, to replace, let's say, or to create a new a new hub here of a sports, a public a swimming pool and a sports facility. And so we liberate all this, this space, uh, trying to create a, a green, bring back green to the, to the cities and create more permeable surfaces. So this was just one of the images uh, that were on site at that moment. Uh, uh, big um, concrete walls, uh, coming from maybe from the constructions of, of those two buildings. And it was a very, very uh, hard space, I would say. Uh, not very friendly at all, almost no vegetation, some, some trees, but uh, not really anything special. So this was an image from the competition, just trying to say that we wanted to make a garden for the people, let's say, and a, and a building that, uh, Kind of not mimetized, but dialogue with the with the rest of the garden, and create a new new public space in in that in those in between those two blocks. So the main program is uh, uh, ground floor uh, is a public swimming pool. Uh, its basements are for filters and machinery, and on top we have a sports court. Um, and in the rooftop uh, we created a photovoltaic plant uh, for renewable energy for the for the whole building in the sites uh, uh, there was a um, there is a, a hydroponic uh, green facade that works as a bioclimatic filter for the for the exposure I will not get deep into explaining uh, in detail the layouts but just let's say the ground floor is a swimming pool because basically because I want to focus in other points that is not about each space or, or the program, but the general program was a swimming pool in the ground floor and on top you can access via a ramp as well on the exterior in between the, the green facade and the, and the building itself. And we have, um, let's say a 40 by 20 uh, multi-purpose sports court. So this is an image of the finished building, but uh, there were a few concepts that we want to explore here, which was yeah, basically a urban regeneration, let's say, of the neighborhood via new sustainable infrastructure, which was one, one, one thing that we believe uh, has had to be done at that, that point. Uh, passive architecture, um, some aerothermal uh, production on, on the top. Uh, one aspect I will talk now is that the, the uh, materials choice we was a CLT timber, uh, which we know uh, about the CO2 of, C of timber, hydroponics as well, and um, data. So going, um, let's say, the resources, right? Because uh, as we know, uh, timber is um, a very old, old material, very resistant, uh, has a lot of amazing properties, and um, 
And uh, so in this building from the ground floor underneath, it was a concrete structure from uh, above level, about, above ground floor level, it was meant to be a, a timber uh, building. Uh, and prefabrication, which, which was another subject that uh, interested a lot, and uh, how to produce uh, the less waste, let's say, um, focus more on developing the, all the pieces uh, from the forest, I mean, in, in a very um, controlled uh, life cycle of, the, of wood, and uh, producing everything on, on the, the fabric or, or the those, and then just bring those pieces and, and assemble them in, on site. So this is an image which shows uh, the first uh, the construction process. These were some of the beams that uh, and slabs and everything that were placed on site um, uh, using CLT timber, as I mentioned, as, as uh, and, and laminated timber as well, and as uh, CO2 storage materials, let's say in a way, and prefabrication. So all these pieces came to site already uh, with the right dimensions. There was a work. Uh, uh, of uh, detailing and, and and making the the right decisions to be everything put like a like a mechano or like a like a, uh, that pieces match and 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 uh, it was just to accelerate as well the the process which is this clock in the left side this is an an image of of how we uh, how they put the the, the beams of the wool. Uh, Receives the loads of the upper uh, sports court on site it was quite impressive. These are beams are two two feet two point five height uh, beams. Some other uh, views of the construction. But this is just an aerial view as well during the process that uh, we can see already they're starting to put the roof with some skylights. Um, the urbanization ha hadn't started at that moment. And you can see the, the wood and then the different parts. So then there was, the, the, obviously everything is nature, right? But uh, in a way, uh, this was uh, the green element, uh, let's call it in a certain way, which was having these uh, bioclimatic filters that will, uh, in summer, this, this, let's say, this in the image in the right is the, the southeast uh, facade, which in summer quite, uh, can uh, impact all this facade, uh, direct heating. So in a way this will um, help. This is uh, in the during the construction and, and it's starting to plan the, the green facade with the hydroponic lines here. It's a, a view of, of some of the planters, the hydroponic planters, uh, which is, they use a, like, not not a, uh, we save on water and on those hydroponics because uh, as, you, as you know it has just some uh, nutrients that uh, fed the plants and in the public space there was a work of, of putting the vegetation and absorbing uh, all the differences of levels in the in the existing condition we absorb them by by slopes green slopes let's say and all that water was uh, filtered to the phreatic level in, in order to, to uh, uh, be, be consistent with a, a permeable strategy. And there was the, the, the energy part. Here's a view of, of, the, of the top level of the PV solar plant, which um, in a way uh, helps uh, the heating and, and, and water. Um, the for water of, water of showers and, and the pool. It is about just as a one data, 95,000, uh, let's say, kilowatts hour annually, um, 300 uh, photovoltaic plan, uh, panels. Some images and some uh, low emissions. I have to say that this building was certified a lead platinum in a way and uh, certification uh, A. They, so it was yeah quite an, a, uh, a bet to do this building, but uh, at the end, uh, I guess we should be heading towards this direction in some of the buildings. And this is uh, just a small detail of, of the planter, um, which is basically uh, a rock wool base and uh, just a goteo, uh, an irrigation, uh, dropping irrigation system, 
and uh, the plants start growing in the uh, right side. And then uh, there was uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes. you should be finishing. If you don't mind, yes. can you finish like in one or two minutes? Yeah. Okay. So then there, there is um, monitorization uh, of different uh, things and data sent to the Centilo. Uh, and then obviously all this is meant for the people. Without people, there is no, no, no uh, logic to do all these things. Uh, people start enjoying the, the building and the... And here maybe just to finish, uh, some images of, of the finished building, which shows the green facades in the upper street that this is more the urban facade uh, which was a polycarbonate uh, facade and the entrance uh, for the sports court this is the view of the the ground floor pool with the, those beams that we saw that they were a place in the sports court uh, with the skylights and natural ventilation we didn't need to to have active systems in this space let's say just just for the pool And uh, yeah, one thing that is, well, it's a, it's a good news is that he was, uh, uh, it was the winner of the architecture and urbanism category of the Premio Ciudad de Barcelona, uh, held this February 2020, but it was the 19, 2019 prize and I'm uh, quite happy about that. So thank you very much. Okay, Javier, so I think that uh, this is the biggest building uh, uh, and yeah, Calumni ever built in Barcelona. Uh, you know that we won the Premio Ciudad de Barcelona the, with the project we did the first year of uh, IAC in the year 2001. We won with the Media House project that he, we did with Media T, uh, um, MIT, but we won in the category of multimedia, not in the category of architecture. So I'm very happy that this right. is the first ever IAC alumni or professor Premio Ciudad de Barcelona. I was, I want to share that I, 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 I had the chance to be uh, with Javier visiting the building, and I think it's one of the most fantastic buildings I have seen in, in many years anywhere, and especially in that place that is one of the poorest neighborhoods in Barcelona, I think that now is transforming also this area. So congratulations, and we'll be uh, able to talk uh, a bit later. So we have now G, uh, that maybe you could you can share us uh, what you have been doing and what are you doing right now, Yi? Okay, hi. All right, thank you for the invitation. Um, uh, so my format will be a bit more, um, you know, the experience I had in, in Bar uh, at IAC and how amazing it was. And I will probably share my screen once again. Uh, yeah, one second. There we go. <clears throat> right, so um, this, I don't know if you see the screen. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we see. I don't know. Do you see the whole screen or, sorry? <laughs> we see one kind of, now we see the whole screen, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Not supposed to, okay. Right, let me try again. All right. Do you see the whole screen now? Oh, okay. So I guess you just see my, my project, right? Now, no. What now is half a screen. Sorry. D don't put full oh, screen. Okay. This is. Keep it the screen as it was before. Yeah. Yeah, now it's okay. Okay. So um, thank you for the introduction, Vicente, and um, great to see you again. Um, and Javier, a great building because I remember you brought me to the site and now uh, it looks amazing. I, I, I didn't realize it was already <laughs> uh, complete that much. Um, so for me, it's not even an exaggeration. Uh, the prize from the contest uh, marks such a big place in my life. And it was uh, really like a beyond obtaining a degree. And when I participated in the fifth advanced architecture context, I was still going through my master's uh, at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. 
my classmate Josiane Carté and I decided to submit our proposal. And uh, we, we submitted it and we completely forgot about it. And then she tells me, comes with my news. Guess what, Juan? We won. And then I thought it would be just like, okay, maybe an honorable mention, good for us. But it was, she told me like, it's first prize and you're going to Barcelona. And that, you know that moment when your brain goes completely white, you know, and you're, you're, you're you know. And then the rest is adventure and IAC was kind enough to offer Josiane also a summer class. And she went ahead to, before me to have a taste of Catalonia. And for me, the whole experience at IAC um, resulted in a big milestone for me. And especially for me, the, when I started work, uh, studying there, it was for me overcoming one of my meek weaknesses. I still had a fear of you know, communication, especially in English. I, under, I went to French schools in Montreal, in Canada. And you know, in, at IAC, a lot of your classmates will be your, your, your classmate will be those who are there for their passion and curiosity. And they're hungry for learning, delivering, and it, it we're all from all, all over the world, international students trying to connect beyond our language barrier. So it was great. And also, yeah, opened so many new doors, opportunities, connecting with people. The, the final project uh, of the first year, uh, which Josep Alcover, Matteo Silverio, and I submitted called uh, Remembering. It was a kinetic structure with smart materials and remote user control. Uh, it allowed me to participate at a conference in, uh, at, called CAD Futures. They have it every few years. And then that year it was held in Istanbul. And then that was an amazing experience. Um, and also school gives you a place to shine for everyone uh, and then show your passion. I'll, I won a IAC student photography competition the first year. And I was able to be the photographer for the school uh, lectures and events. And it was a precious uh, experience to meet all the guest lectures to name from Mark Burry, Winnie Maas, Kengo Kuma, it was uh, unbelievable. And then I can't forget the one with the famous chef, uh, Catalan chef, Ferran Adria in uh, the Valdara campus, the other campus. And they are truly inspiring people. And then, the I, I guess the the first semesters uh, had a chance to work very hard and it gave me uh, yak give me a uh, uh, second year with another uh, my teammate Joseph, which was the a, a, a open sorry my internet is unstable okay so one second my internet is unstable. And so, yeah, IAC offered uh, us a, a second year, uh, which was Open Thesis Fabrication Program, where we, were, we focused on um, robotically fabricated uh, pavilions. Uh, so this was, yeah, I can show it to you. So yeah, this, I'm, I'm not gonna go into detail of any of the project, but I'm just gonna put it in the background and uh, and then this um, was this this second year program was very different in terms of like design processes and learning like, yeah, obtaining different skill sets. And this experience contributed for growth, but with a, a collective one with, with a further growing community. And it was I, I would say it was a very dynamic school. So be also uh, before starting the second year this second year OTF program. Uh, Joseph and I offered part-time work at an architecture studio was called Built by Associative Data, where the directors, Ali Basbus, who's going to be a jury for this year's contest, and uh, Luis Fragada was uh, our very admired teacher at IAC. And we, were, we worked on several projects, and we also had collaborations with Vicente Goyard. And, uh, yeah, it was a great experience to be able to go to school and work at the same time until my third year in Barcelona. And not uh, and the last but not least, along with school and work comes the life in Barcelona. And from my experience, it was not only a beautiful coastal city in Europe, but a large one with a truly uh, economical, functional city with deep cultural settings from uh, food, art, architecture, festivals, and of course the people. 
And it, you know, it felt like a vacation, yet it was a very inspirational city with, you know, it gives you cont continuous motivation. And don't forget about its proximity to all the nearby cities and attractions. You know, you don't have time to get bored. So after those uh, three years, uh, it was, you know, at the, initially it was meant to be nine months, but it became three years. And then, then I moved to Boston, uh, joined some of, some of my friends uh, who have established a startup uh, that emerged from MIT about four years ago. And it has now a partnership with an MIT professor, Dennis Frenchman, who is, uh, he's a director of MIT Center for Real Estate and also director for DesignX, which is MIT's accelerator for innovation in cities, design and human environment. So I work for Tecuma Frenchman, this startup, is a, which is an urban design an innovation firm and we envision the future of cities a planet-centric practice that design uh, solutions at the intersection of nature and human ingenuity and uh, i've been working there for two years and a half where i was uh, able to apply all my you know learning from iac and past learnings tools and skill sets and we have been working on several master plans and urban design projects around the world some in middle east especially in china and this week, we just submitted an international competition in Penang, South Island in Malaysia, and where we were shortlisted with, which is crazy, with other four other consortiums, including Bjork Ingels, Foster's, Foster and Partners, and VRDV and Iran Studio. And uh, in 2018, um, we were also awarded first prize for a master plan in Shenzhen, New Marin City which is this one. Uh, for, for, for more detail, you can visit our website. Thank you. And, and so this project was a master plan from Shenzhen uh, uh, in China, and then it's a future flagship for the city representing its blue economy. And uh, for several projects, we were finalists with, along with Vicente. Uh, together, we were finalists together. And this summer, we have two more going on with, along with Vicente. So it's going to be interesting. <laughs> um, we are competing and, now. We are competing now. It's interesting in China. Yeah, it's crazy. So, you know, it's crazy how the world is small and you never know how you cross paths with people you met. Uh, in, before. And for work, I had a chance to meet a lot of IAC alumni. It's eye-opening, and especially, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward for future collaborations with other alumni. Hi, Javier. And we all work remotely uh, now. Partners, we have partner in Boston, Washington, D.C., Netherlands, and Dubai. And it's completely a beginning of a new lifestyle. And, you know, and, and I had the chance to come back to Barcelona to work from there. And it was, you know, to stay creative, you know. And we me to the context the opportunity to be able to study abroad create a new community around the world this link between um all your new friends it's it is what i truly believe like the the potential in your future career i think it still has to be unleashed and and yeah it was a great experience um and I, I haven't realized Danielle was going to be speaking next. Uh, that we live. I mean, I, I, I technically live in Boston, in Cambridge, but I haven't realized Danielle also was. Uh, my my colleague told me he she knows Danielle. Um, so small world again. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Good. So that one we lose uh, with your company, but I'm sorry. Oh, will be also similar so it's funny now we are meeting each other in china so the last the first to come uh, uh in the i think what the year 2000 what five or six and so maybe you can share your your experience at the at the arc and what you did afterwards
Vicente, shall I go ahead? Yeah, please, please go ahead, of okay, course. Good. Um. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, thank you for the invitation. It's always uh, great to represent the IAC family. Um, also great to see how uh, others uh, had a very successful experience by uh, stopping by Barcelona. Um, so I want to maybe start very quickly with a you know, short history of what happened with me as well. Um, so I was studying in Madrid, as Vicente mentioned, um, together with my partners at that time, uh, Alberto Alvarez and Rodrigo Rubio, we did this uh, you know, first edition of the self-sufficient uh, housing uh, competition that I'll show in a minute. And then we had the opportunity of, of going to Barcelona. I have to be very fair when I say that, you know, um, at that time I was not even remotely going, you know, considering going, but really this has uh, radically changed, obviously, uh, my life uh, after spending several um, years there. So let me tell you, maybe starting with the, with the, with the competition, a little bit of what we, what we did. Um, one second here. So, um, so basically, these are some of the drawings that we did for the, this first edition. For us, it was a great opportunity of putting forward some of the agendas that we had at the time. So basically, this, uh, in a similar version of this year's uh, competition, was, let's say, not with a specific site in mind, but rather trying to tackle a series of important questions. So we proposed this idea of how to create a series of buildings that could be linked, uh, kind of like almost creating a network of self-sufficient nodes in a generic city, in this case, in the, in the south of Spain. So basically the project uh, comprised a series of like, you know, uh, buildings that were placed in the city as kind of like different nodes and connected uh, between them with a series of kind of like landscape um, um, strategies. One of the interesting things about this project was that, you know, rather than conceiving architecture as only the moment of consumption, uh, we used the opportunity of rethinking how ecological functions such as recycling or, um, you know, the reception or harvesting of energy or the storage of energy um, could also be, be a kind of like a driver of, of the design. So basically all these kind of like nodes and towers were obviously housing and, and were in, you know, incorporating a series of programs, but together were hybridized with, you know, a main kind of like ecological uh, function was, was given these kind of, um, you know, different spatial configurations uh, in a way. And then we had this idea of, you know, really having and creating almost like a network. We thought that, you know, there was no, a possibility of creating something autonomous if it was not really exchanging between a, a created kind of like network. So, um, um, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> at that time we were very inspired by somebody that has been uh, visiting several times IAC, which was a uh, Jaime Lerner and this idea of, you know, how almost urban acupuncture by inserting very specific things on cities, it can trigger a lot of like a big kind of like um, a change. So anyways, this was a little bit of the, uh, of the, of the drawings that we prepared for, for that competition. And then similarly, as uh, G was saying, yeah, like we were, you know, we, we realized that there were like almost like 300 uh, students presented to that competition and said like, well, there is no chance that we're going to get uh, a prize. Then I remember uh, that Lucas Capelli, who that at the time was one of the promoters of this competition, gave us a call and said like, well, uh, we're very impressed with your project, but uh, we want to make sure if this this is a new thing or you have been using something else that you have developed because it's so developed and so highly sophisticated that we were not expecting and we just simply want to make sure that this was done for this occasion, which was obviously the case. And, you know, a few uh, weeks later, we, um, we received the first prize. And uh, soon after, we decided to, to move to Barcelona. So, it, you know, in a way, because I didn't know exactly the nature of this, uh, of this presentation, but, you know, I just simply want to show you how from some of the ideas that I did at that time has been basically affecting the things that I'm doing now, almost like, uh, you know, 13 years later or something like that, or 14 years later. So I've continued with this line of work of, um, uh, you know, creating this idea of, you know, self-sufficient uh, kind of um, 
you know, urban, uh, kind of like urbanisms and urban forms. So this was, for instance, another competition I did several years later when I moved to, to the U.S. that was basically for the design of a, an autonomous um, a city, in this case, in, in kind of like in Arizona, where we were trying to put forward some of the ideas, but in a radically different context, saying like, well, cities should not grow endlessly, should be, uh, you know, nodes that whenever they reach a certain size, they should move on. We should create cities around like uh, some large public space that could be productive, but also could be a space for kind of like events. We should reverse ideas of how a building is always protective against resources and try to, you know, change it to something that really can harvest. So, you know, not, not to get too much into the detail, but, you know, just showing you a little bit of these, um, you know, these ideas, how basically they have been uh, develop and reiterate it in, in different like venues in this case in, in this competition and we, we managed to get the, the, the first prize. <coughs> Another um, a project that uh, we got like second prize, this was a big international competition also for the redevelopment of a, of a piece of a city with a lot of a, a sports uh, facility I did together with uh, with my partner at the time, Rodrigo Rubio, also former winner of the of the sufficient uh, housing competition, and, and a couple of uh, Chilean colleagues, Tomas Foch and Sofia Armanet, basically a project for um, basically urban design and how to incorporate these logics of how the landscape performs and generates certain active kind of like uh, properties in the configuration of of this new piece of the of the city. I'll go uh, very quick, and then <coughs> after. Um, you know, joining uh, the School of, uh, of Design here at Harvard, uh, where I did a second master's, I had the opportunity of winning a big scholarship from Spain that was basically paying pretty much for everything my studies here in the US. So I thought this was a great opportunity. And then my work has been trying to not be so propositive, but try also to kind of like zoom out a little bit and try to understand really what are the kind of like theories, the, the, the ideas, the concepts behind everything that I was trying to do. So some of those have now taken the form of like important book publication. This is one I did like a few years ago together with Nikos Katsikis, where basically we took this dynamic ecological understanding of how cities should perform um, with the concept of uh, urban metabolism. And we were trying to explore through a series of um, uh, commissioned uh, kind of like articles from, from different people and different kind of like voices. So these are some of the um, um, uh, 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 contributions to the book and some conference that were associated with that. I also uh, even went zooming out even larger and tried to see like, well, I mean, this is interesting, but I feel that architects, we are all the time trapped in the kind of like uh, urban design scale. Can we even zoom out uh, more and, you know, try to understand what are the regional dynamics that really affect the ways, uh, you know, certain regions uh, develop their their projects, their urban designs, their master plans. So I did together with uh, Charles Wolkin, Mason White, and Claire Lister, this other book publication, which is uh, basically an atlas that is trying to serve as a kind of like prelude for future projects to kind of like, um, like emerge. And maybe to, uh, you know, uh, to finish this kind of like line of work that I follow after, after the competition back in, in 2006 is uh, my most recent publication, which uh, along the lines of what Javier was mentioning, uh, it looks pretty much about uh, the role that uh, boots and, you know, and structural timber is going to play in the new kind of um, uh, redevelopment and, and, uh, and development of, uh, of uh, cities, basically because it's a um, material that is both renewable, organic, it stores carbon, and it has the potential of now creating larger and higher densities. So, um, this is getting a lot of like uh, uh, attraction right now. It's a, it's, a, it's a very hot kind of like topic. And we thought that through the book, our role was to really set up the agenda and try to really explain what are the implications. Uh, the wood is a really great material to use if you account for everything that happens beyond the actual commodity, really taking in consideration regional dynamics, uh, territorial dynamics, but also trying to understand its kind of molecular properties. So in that sense, the subtitle of the book, which is from the molecular to the territorial, I think in that sense is even more relevant for, uh, for the work in the sense that it, it applies this kind of like transscalar, um, um, transscalar uh, a strategy or methodology to really interrogate this, uh, this kind of question. So you know, we go from questions of how the forests are managed and how they're produced and what are the kind of like cycles of carbon sequestering to several typologies and different, uh, um, you know, urban kind of configuration, trying to explain that everything is part of the same uh, transformation, everything is part of the same um, kind of like metabolism. So the other kind of 
um, uh, you know, line of work that has been very important in, in my career and again had its origin at, at the ARC is, is this development of really kind of like very small, highly speculative, very experimental, very forward thinking series of prototypes that uh, I consider almost like seeds of future larger projects and future agendas to, to come. Um, so, you know, this has ranged from, you know, public uh, uh, urban installations such as the Way of Woods that I built a few years ago in, in Boston to, you know, like the Fab Lab House, as Vicente was mentioning, uh, series of like, uh, you know, like, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, pavilion prototypes and, and, and few, you know, towers that I'm doing also now in, um, in South America. So all this started in a way from, you know, this kind of like ex initial exploration at the ARC with all the the uh, you know different uh, digital fabrication um, um, kind of uh, equipment that was available there and you know all the all the education surrounding this idea of you know uh, learning by fabricating by doing with your hands so these are like some of the work i did for as part of this fab academy uh, um, um, kind of like program that i was kind of like at the very first kind of like generations where we were using you know large uh, laser cutters to produce very few pieces that could be assembled in kind of like different ways. I brought this picture because I think it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting that, you know, uh, if I'm not mistaken and I recognize her, well, I think this is Laia. This is, uh, which obviously has been uh, somebody very important at the for the uh, for the last uh, 15 years, uh, working almost from the operational side uh, of things, uh, Tomas, uh, Diez, uh, that now it's uh, one of the kind of leading figures on, on the Fab, uh, Fab Lab, let's say, movement. Uh, Areti Marcopulo, which is uh, obviously the academic director at, at the AC. Um, but, you know, at the time we were all kind of like playing and experimenting. And obviously, as you can see, this has three or very successful um, uh, professional and academic um, uh, careers. So anyway, so, some of the images of those explorations that a few years later, uh, in a way, <laughs> trigger larger projects such as the, the, the Fab Lab House that was, you know, a prototype that we did with uh, researchers and students uh, at IAC and managed to be completely and successfully functional at, uh, at Madrid as part of this um, um, uh, solar decathlon competition where we were really changing the paradigm saying like, you know, you know, the same way uh, form has followed function as, as a kind of like doing like a lot of period of time in, in modernism. We now need to find ways that form follows kind of like energy as opposed to function and really try to make our buildings more sensible to those kind of like questions. So these are some of the images of the project. Projects such as the uh, Endesa Pavilion as well, promoted by the, by the AC. Um, this one was developed mostly by my partner at that time, uh, Rodrigo, with the people at the AC, which was a kind of like second version of the Fab Lab House with the same material, same kind of like systems at this, uh, you know, uh, in this case, exploring more kind of like facade uh, kind of like aspects of the uh, of the project and how this could be implemented for larger uh, typologies and uh, more dense uh, as you see here this was uh, presented in the Oslo Triennale at the time that we uh, submitted or le let's say more speculative uh, pavilions such as the this world fab condenser that we did for the fab 10 uh, exhibition at uh, at Barcelona so I just simply showed you this just to um, um, kind of like reiterate the importance that you know, things that we did uh, revolving digital fabrication and the potential so that they offer in order to create like new forms of architecture, new spatial relations, how has been kind of like being harvested throughout the, the years. And I'm very happy now that, uh, you know, in a kind of different role, less about doing, but maybe more as a kind of like instructor and, 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 and director, uh, together with Vicente, we have set up this uh, fantastic master at, the, at Baidaura, um, completely immersive where students really you know, like um, um, uh, do pretty much everything uh, with their own hands. So it's a master very much invested, not so much on, on, on kind of like learning as an abstract concept, but, you know, learning by making, by living, by doing, which is, I think, very, very pertinent also to the, um, to the kind of like topic of the, of the competition that we have uh, with the competition that we have, uh, you know, um, up in front of us. So anyways, with that, uh, with this image of, um, of Baidaura and, you know, some of the last project we have done, I just, um, um, anyways, uh, thank you for the, for the invitation. I hope this, again, very succinctly gives you an idea about obviously how things has, uh, has affected and has changed our lives um, after doing a very simple, like a couple of weeks uh, uh, competition, how that could trigger a big change in your professional life. 
So thank you, Daniel. Uh, can you stop sharing the screen? So yeah, yeah I think it's very amazing to see uh, the work that all you three have been doing. And, uh, and in general, people from IAC now that next year will be uh, 20 years uh, that we have been developing the first master that was called the Master in Advanced Architecture. And right now there are several master programs. There are uh, more than 1,000 alumni around the world. And we are always, I am always surprised and happy to see what uh, everyone is doing. So I would like uh, to offer now the people that is in the audience that maybe uh, if they want to write something in the chat, uh, I can ask the questions to the, to the speakers. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would like uh, to know, uh, Javier, what are you doing right now? What is your, uh, I heard you are working in some other projects also, big projects in Barcelona. Yeah, you have to unmute yourself, Javier. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, basically, yeah, I've been working in some small, uh, smaller scale stuff uh, uh, with a few colleagues. Uh, but I'm also, uh, I started working like one year ago, one year and a half ago in the, with the Japanese team of architects, which are uh, developing the Kamno Stadium with development, let's say. So it has been, um, a very different uh, experience, let's say, because it's a different scale. It's, it's uh, working in a city infrastructure. So basically, we're uh, well, with that team, uh, we're doing Ejecutivo and finishing things. And uh, it has been, yeah, quite a great experience working in, in such a project, let's say. I hope uh, we can see it built in a, in a few, few years. Good. Um, so, G, do you want to react anyhow to the uh, work that Javier and uh, Daniel has been presenting? Yeah, yeah, they're they're wonderful. Uh, I think they're um, really like what IAC has been, uh, you know, going for. And yeah, I wish I could present some of my projects too, but uh, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, Daniel, any comment to Javier's work? Because, well, he, he had the chance to win that competition. You know, when, uh, you know what happened? I was chief architect of Barcelona. And then uh, one day we organized, we organized maybe more than 200 competitions in four years. And then I was in several uh, juries and we were doing all clean competitions. Uh, so that means that anyone could win. And I remember that competition that there were several finally, maybe there were 50 projects for this sport hall. And then uh, I like it, that one because it has a very simple structure. I didn't remember that was done with wood, but I like very much how it was connected with the structure of the neighborhood. And more than that, to use the green facade and then the idea of connecting this facade with the public space and so on. So I remember that uh, uh, somehow uh, the project that won, and then maybe like three or four months later, we had a meeting, an internal meeting, because after someone won the competition, then there was a meeting in order to start to work with a public company that will, will be building that. So I remember that someone approached me and he said, well, I am Javier, and so I am an IAC alumni, alumni, and I won the competition. And I could not believe it, obviously, because n never <laughs> anyone that was an IAC uh, student, uh, I thought I, I could imagine that somehow he was applying for competitions and winning. And these were really very surrealistic. And then well, I understood which was the uh, situation and well, they, they, they start to work. I remember at that time that I really, one of the problems that we have is that uh, we were trying, we were discuss, starting to discuss about the self-sufficient buildings from the year 2005, that this is when Daniel won. And 
and when I was chief architect, I was trying to push for the self-sufficient buildings. But then in Barcelona, we didn't have architects that were able to do these kind of projects. And I remember trying to push and to push and even to the public companies to say, if anyone wants a competition, we need to ask that to keep producing energy in the buildings and so on. So in this case, I really was pushing to this public company in order to put all the resources that was needed in order to produce energy in the rooftop and then to try to develop a good and consistent building. So it was only, uh, I, I quit in my position and four years later, I realized that that building was built and it started to win some awards, first in the World Architecture Festival and later in, in Barcelona. So I am somehow happy to see that this is maybe a small manifesto of the time that I was working as chief architect that was uh, able to be done by some IAC alumni. Now there are other buildings made with wood, uh, also in Barcelona, and I think that uh, we really need uh, now uh, with this crisis and everything is happening, it will be an incredible moment for innovation, for, for I mean, people will be more aware and more interested about what means innovation. So somehow, um, uh, I would like to, yeah, this is my thoughts. I am really very happy to see how people are progressing and to see so many good projects happening around. Daniel, uh, how do you feel also being a student and now being co-director in the at IAC? So how, how much do you think IAC has changed in these last 15 years? I, audio doesn't work. I cannot listen. Sorry. So I was simply saying that, uh, I mean, it's very clear that, uh, you know, IAC's agenda are, uh, have always been and they keep being very relevant. And that's, that's what is explaining that, you know, we keep growing and having more international attention and more students and more kind of like programs in a way. Because, um, you know, I think the, the world is moving towards one direction, which is very clear. Um, I am, uh, you know, these days, over the last uh, three months, I started um, being a senior consultant, for instance, for the World Bank, and they keep talking all the time about now with the COVID situation on an interesting kind of concept, which is build back better, right? Like the BBB. So basically, they say that now we are in such a crucial moment that, you know, if we reset the system, if we start building again, as we used to do in the past, we will be again losing another historical opportunity. And I think, you know, many of the things that we have been claiming at IAC, many of these agendas now even, they were relevant two months ago or three months ago. Now, post, in the kind of post-COVID era, they are even more important and more relevant than ever. So to be honest, um, to be frank, I mean, like obviously IAC has been changing. IAC has been having this amazing capacity of reacting very fast to all these kind of like changes. You know, I... I'm also affiliated with, uh, with Harvard. I've, I've been teaching these last two years at the uh, Rhode Island School of Design, which is one of the top kind of fine arts uh, schools of architecture in the US. You know, I know very much the culture and they are large institutions that they have harder time to really react very fast. And I think this is also some of the nice qualities of IAG that has been able um, really to kind of like, you know, give a response to the current uh, um, moment. And I think this competition is a fantastic example and opportunity for that. You know, like uh, I think most of the proposals that probably we will receive and that everybody's going to be submitting, they have to be around really proposing this kind of like alternative mode of building back better and, and resetting the system in a kind of like a very different way. So I'm very kind of like excited also to see, uh, you know, what the contributions are, because again, I think the moment right now is, is more relevant than ever. I cannot hear you, Vicente. Yeah, any reaction, Javier or G? I mean, um, definitely, I totally agree with, with what Daniel is saying. And, uh, just a, a parenthesis, um, I, I admire a lot of people in IAC, uh, students and teachers and everything, but I kind of have in the back of my mind, G as being one of the top uh, guys which I get to meet over there, it was incredible. And uh, 
as well, I always, the, the few uh, critics which I was involved, uh, I always pay a lot of attention to, well, to the rest of the guys, but always the critics of Daniel were very interesting uh, for me, uh, in a way. So this is a pleasure to, to be with them. And uh, uh, yeah, going back to the, to the competition, I think uh, it's a time to rethink a lot of, a lot of issues a lot of spaces, a lot of uh, what we are doing with materials, with, with a lot of things. So I, I guess it's a right time to, to try to move forward some, some ideas. Yeah, I, th I think maybe one, one other quick thought that I have um, is, you know, at the time, uh, I remember, and maybe this was very, you know, like uh, childish or like, uh, you know, ignorant uh, at some level. But I remember that, you know, in our year, the price was, I think, two thousand dollars, or sorry, two thousand euros, or something like that. And then the master, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically the master tuition, kind of like uh, fully funded, you know. And at that time, I, th I thought like, okay, great, you know, two thousand euros. This is great. I'm young. This is good money to do stuff or whatever. And I was really not paying enough attention to the other side of the price, which was this possibility of doing a master kind of like for free and then you know this probably was the most kind of like naive aspect and and you know in a way I was never thinking on going and then because of my uh, the partners at that time they say like well maybe this is actually a great opportunity and I'm very happy that you know we managed to end up going because again this this has been like very transformational to that so you know don't don't underestimate that uh, you know that side of the price, because again, I think it's the most relevant of all, you know, like having, you know, uh, such a, a, you know, high end institution with all the resources, with a fantastic faculty, with great connections, with very relevant agendas, uh, you know, for free, you know, as part of the, of, uh, you know, just simply submitting a competition. I think it's really, really a great uh, kind of like opportunity not to underestimate for sure. Good. So I think we are arriving to the end of our session. I don't know if anyone, the participants, has been shy uh, to write any comment, but I don't know if anyone wants to make any question or comment using their voice. Is anyone interested to, do, to make a comment? I see, oh, here we have one question, comment. I am, yes, please. Uh, Isa, want to make something? I don't know if you can speak directly. Isa, can you talk? Isa Schneider. Uh, yes, I can speak directly. Can you hear me? Yep. Can we see your face? Uh, yes. One second. Let me just get my camera working. We, we have Isa Schneider and Maria Schneider. So, okay, Isa, where are you? Where are you now? Which city? I'm in Philadelphia. Great. So, um, so yeah. So I actually um, applied to the Harvard GSD program um, for whoever is talking about that. And unfortunately, I was super sad that it got canceled. But my question was, um, as a rising sophomore in university, I'm really interested in architecture. So I was wondering what advice you had um, as someone who's really looking to try to get experience in the field and trying to learn as much as I can about programs and everything I can. Mm -hmm. Danielle, please go ahead. Yeah, um, so, you know, like, just this thing that you are doing, I think that's a, such a great like step, you know, like connecting from Philadelphia to something that is happening in Barcelona, being aware of what's going on. Um, you know, most of my students these days, they say like, oh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do because the job market is very slow and, you know, nobody's hiring. So we are in a kind of like moment that we don't know what to do. Um, I think, to be honest with you, it's a great opportunity to, you know, uh, experience and, and experiment a little bit with you know several other things that, that you can do maybe for you it's a little bit too soon but I don't see why not you for instance could submit a proposal for this competition because this is not really about having the complete full knowledge about what architecture is and getting a degree necessarily it's maybe an opportunity also to reflect and put some ideas and try to see if this could be part of a you know of a, of a motivation that you have and maybe through developing 
you know, uh, some ideas in the form of a competition, maybe you realize that you like a lot of architecture and that's what you have or you want to kind of like uh, pursue. Um, to your first part, I mean, like, uh, so basically you got accepted, but the master is canceled. Is that what happened with you? Or? It was just the, pro the whole program was canceled because of the virus. And so they said right. just apply next year, hopefully. If right. right, right, right. So, you know, like, you know, to be honest with you, uh, I know many people that they took a kind of like a break of doing, a, you know, some of the things uh, and not have a kind of linear kind of like progression in the education going from high school to, you know, college and then to do masters and then to do PhD and whatever. I mean, like, that's definitely not the one I follow. I'm currently about to defend my PhD. I'm almost 40 years. So I've been almost like a student uh, my entire life, but simultaneously I've been uh, teaching, I've been doing projects. So, you know, I think these opportunities of maybe taking a, a kind of like a year and try to, you know, um, uh, explore even farther the possibilities of what architecture could offer in the form of competitions or in the form of explorations or collaboration. I think it's a great way to realize if this is exactly what, what you want. And then I'm, I'm sure, you know, things would change a little bit and you will have opportunities of, uh, of keeping your studies uh, in, in the next few years. So, you know, rather than being kind of what's sad about it, I think it's also a great opportunity to explore and, and do, do all the things in parallel for sure. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. I would like also to, rem to remember to everyone uh, that uh, when I was a student of architecture, obviously we were reading books and we were learning uh, how people were drawing and which were their projects. And so another thing that we do in this competition is that uh, there are some winners, but there are also the finalists get published in a book that we do with the actor publishers. So that means that another from the, I remember the day that someone told me they, they were publishing my uh, final project. I was super happy because to be able to share with others my work was something fantastic. So uh, I think that uh, obviously YAC is a place very open that we promote freedom, we promote innovation. Uh, we, we like more science than religion, so we don't have any style to sell. What we want is that people get empowered, get tools, uh, and also get uh, connected with other people around the world and get friendships uh, like Javier and Angie and, and so, so on. No? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, so I think uh, yeah, this, maybe, this time it's complex. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry Daniel. No, I, mean, I, mean, I was going to say like two other things like very quickly, like, you know, one, I think G said that very well. I mean, like when you do, I mean, like when you develop or be are part of uh, any master program uh, around the world, and I would say especially at YAC because it's such a international environment and you meet people from, you know, many different cultures and backgrounds. It's, uh, you know, the, the, that you belong to a network, that that network sticks with you for the rest of your life. And, you know, like, I think for all the three of us, the people that we have met there, I'm still collaborating, I'm still in touch with them, I still do things with them. So, you know, that's probably even the most important thing of joining in a, in a kind of like, a, like program. So, you know, something to really have in mind. And also, you know, I was thinking now when you were talking, you know, like, oh, you know, there are certain schools that are canceling kind of like programs. What YAC, again, once again did in this case to react very fast is now we're in the process of having series of uh, master programs that are going to be fully online. Maybe it's not the best condition, but, you know, for people that is saying like, well, what I do, nothing versus maybe doing an online program where I could get exposed to many different experts and uh, several things. Maybe this is also a great opportunity to, you know, to consider in these times that are a little bit more uncertain and, you know, like, I actually enjoy, I'm enjoying a lot teaching VR the remote. I have a totally different experience and relation. I'm not saying it's ideal, but it, it has its advantages as well. So this is obviously also something to, to consider, you know, like uh, maybe doing a kind of like online program for a year to see if you like the topic, you like it, and then you can obviously keep going with your studies when things uh, get back to, to a little bit, uh, hopefully different normality uh, when, when, when we're over this virus. There is another interesting topic is that the play that is here is called Vaidaura, where G was taking the picture. You remember that window that is up here? So right now we, we are developing an immersive program. And then during the time of lockdown, obviously we offer the students to stay because they are living there or to go home. So more than uh, half of the students decide to stay. And then they are having an incredible experience of living really in a community, having access to the nature and having access also to some, some tools and some 
a situation that the lockdown is very different when you are with some other people and you are able to share and to produce food and to do some experiments and so on. We were having a discussion with Taliesin uh, uh, by Find Your Right in the, that is in Phoenix. And we know that there are other schools that are immersive. And I think that this is one of the interesting <laughs> topics that are being discussed today in some American universities, no? the idea. Uh, and in fact, they are discussing in the NBA, if they put all the players all, all the players in one city uh, or in uh, or Disney World, they do a lockdown in order to be able to do the, this activity. No? So I think that uh, to think how education is happening in the lockdown, I think that this is something very relevant. Uh, it's not clear what will happen in the future with the virus and our condition. In any case, as Daniel said, we, 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 well, that's why also for the people that are, want to participate in the competition, uh, we say that if someone wins, we'll be able to do the program next year or the other year, so we'll keep the, this possibility. But also there will be other possibilities like this online program, the remote programs and also here in Baidaura uh, is more than, I think it's more than sure that we'll have the uh, next program going on because uh, this will happen in a more uh, lockdown situation. Thank you very much. Uh, so we have Josiane Kramp. Are you there? Yes, hi. Um, I'm not going to put my camera on because I'm with my son. He just got up. But I had a few questions for you. Well, I'm from Montreal. I'm uh, Jiwon's um, teammate uh, from uh, McGill University. Um, I've been uh, to Yak for uh, the summer school, the Kwabu summer school in 2014, I remember. It was such a great experience. Uh, it was amazing. Now my question to you guys, and maybe probably more for Daniel that is now teaching at the school, how can you have a more, a bigger influence on firm like architecture firm uh, about all your, what you're doing now, like you, you, we're doing exploration, we, we do research a lot, we have so many opportunities to, to, to build things that we're not uh, used to see in regular firms, how the, the, the school, YAC school can influence more architectural firm to for, for now the post covid what what's coming like in the next few years or decades um oh. i i feel that a lot of school have so much opportunities and and you know ways of 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 building the world but we don't feel it after in regular firms and that's what i i've i've seen a lot oh. That's what I experience now, and I think it's a shame. So how the school can influence more what's in, in I would say, real life, real architectural right. life? <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's a, it's a great question. Uh, I have to say, though, that um, the kind of like firm professional environment in North America to me, it's very, very different from other side of the of the planet. For instance, for the, you know, from Europe here is you know, generally speaking, very large corporation, very large design firms and very tiny kind of ateliers doing very, very specific projects. And it's almost nothing in between kind of, um, kind of like, so, uh, you know, in Europe, for instance, I think it's a much more uh, friendly, flexible environment where you can have like a very small offices, mid, uh, medium, uh, large and extra large firms. So, you know, they cover like a wider range of, of proposals and, um, and ideas. So, it's definitely, I hear you when you say that because I, I kind of like experience a similar thing here um, in the US. At the same moment, I want to also think that, you know, um, we have now a historical opportunity on really building differently when we like, you know, emerge out of COVID. We have, you know, like a crisis of capitalism. We have an environmental crisis. So I think it's the perfect opportunity to really start thinking in a different way. So for instance, I'm not saying this is perfect, but I am starting to see pockets of hope, uh, you know, several ideas that I think they are starting to transform, such as, 
you know, like emergence of like starting to build more with timber and a lot of like uh, timber, uh, uh, you know, projects emerging. I'm not saying this is great, but I'm saying this is a good step towards the, the, you know, a better kind of like purpose. New forms of living now, you see that there are a lot of like emerging communities in suburban areas that are trying to be, you know, implementing this self-sufficient idea. So, and this might not be mainstream now, but there are definitely emerging certain projects. And I, the expertise and the knowledge and, and, and the experience of people that has been through, you know, YAC and, you know, through Baidaura, through YAC or through any of the programs that we have there, I think they are simply better equipped to try to, you know, um, be at the at the top of that transformation, at the top of that change. And, you know, don't forget that now those kind of like people with that particular background are being more desired by this firm because they also want to be part of that change. So again, it might take a few years, but I think we are definitely moving towards the kind of like that, that direction. And, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful that that would be, that would be the case. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a comment here from Sipta Hadi. Uh, she say, I am Sipta from Indonesia. Any advice from you for the city that has not sufficient data or technology and infrastructure to do some kind of so-called advanced architecture? What can we do to improve our condition? Can we keep uh, up with the digital era now? I'm sorry if uh, my question is not specific. I hope my question is understandable. I'm sorry I cannot speak directly because my son is sleeping next to me in Indonesia. It's 10 p.m. now. Great. So yeah, we can answer you. Uh, we we love people that have kids, and we love that. I mean, the world is developing and growing. Uh, I would like to, about this. You know, the answer is this. I was in the most beautiful parametric building I ever seen was in Iran. Uh, that was built in the 16th century. It was an incredible dome with a parametric form. And you know what? They didn't have computers. Computers were invented several centuries later. So that means that uh, obviously advance was connected with something uh, that somehow was uh, related with the digital world and parametric design and so on. But the parametric design was invented before uh, the invention of uh, of computers. Uh, we are we have seen also many low technologies using something that we could say parametric design or advanced design. So yeah, we like we like really uh, to use the tools that we have in front of us. Now I remember it. So this morning, one project by uh, the Foster Foundation in order to do some vaults in. Uh, in Africa in order to do a drone port. You can Google that. We are working here also in Barcelona. In Baidara, we have a, a vault made with brick. So that means that we, you can use really very traditional materials and in any case to develop what has been so-called the advanced architecture. So I think that computers are important, but more than this, people are, is important and the brain and drawing and so on is, is more important than computers. So that you can look for these samples uh, of uh, this old parametric architecture that was done without computers, no? What do you think, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's, that's the case. And, you know, also to the first part of your question, uh, Sita, um, you know, I mean, I think uh, probably, for instance, like the case of Baidaura, where Vicente and myself are, are leading this, this kind of like master program, it looks to with, you know, how to do with very advanced maybe technologies, very simple things that could be basically implemented anywhere, you know, like, so we always have in mind this, this kind of like local, um, you know, um, you know, local uh, technologies and local cultures and local dynamics to really intervene. So this is, I mean, like in general, IAG is not trying to just, you know, provide education for a, almost for an elite or not only on the advanced economies or the advanced countries. Quite the contrary. I mean, think that these tools uh, could really transform any environment, any place in uh, in the world. Um, one of the interesting things is, for instance, like uh, through the network of Fab Labs, that obviously Barcelona was one of the you know uh, instrumental 
uh, kind of like nodes in developing that kind of like they were they have been thousands of these labs open in many many different economies many different countries with different degrees of, of development and has been also very instrumental on in transforming the way uh, people fabricate the, the way people build on those kind of like areas so you know having that knowledge and having that expertise as part of the experience of being at the act I think it's also so really to then go back and, and you know be able to push uh, the development of your own uh, kind of like countries and your uh, the, you know the places where where you would like to uh, to to build uh, a career. So so in that sense, I think it's also a great opportunity about that. And you know there are thousands of examples about about those kind of things uh, that we have done for sure. Good. So we have uh, two more minutes. Is there any last question or comment? If not, I would like to uh, say also thank you for the City of Barcelona and the Order of Architects and the Mies van der Rohe Foundation. This uh, event is also inside the Week of Architecture of uh, Barcelona that this year has been everything online. And uh, we, are, we have been very happy to share the last uh, Ciudad de Barcelona award that was produced or co-produced by one IAC alumni. And I would like to ask you, if you don't mind, uh, to the participants to switch on your camera in order to take a screenshot, uh, because now I see there is one Maria Schneider. I don't know if she's related with you, Isa Schneider. Yeah? We have Susana and we have Pablo and Kun and Chucheda. So would you mind to switch on your camera, please? Mar, thank you. Laya is here. Zipta is there. Great. Uh, yeah, we see Chucheda. Yeah, this is great. Thank you very much. Michelle, thank you. Jordi is also here. Um, so anyone else is joining us? Yeah, Pablo, thank you for switching on the camera. Uh, so, oh, Felipe Niño, we have here Felipe, thank you for switching. Juan, Ca, Juan, Juan Gabriel Secondo desde Valencia. Uh, we have some students from Baidaura that they are with us. Aniket is also here. So, guys, thank you very much. Um, it has been a pleasure. We'll organize another event in the, yeah, Maria Schneider final is here. So we'll have <laughs> one event, uh, another event, my the end of the month, or maybe um, at the beginning of June, we'll invite several people from mostly from Latin America, and maybe there will be some other events that we'll share with you if you are con uh, connected with IAC networks and the webpage of the competition, you will get the information. Uh, again, thank you very much. And yeah, see you soon. I hope that you enjoy this meeting. Thank you, G. Thank you, Javier. And thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Submit good Bye. proposals. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.